Art forgery is not a modern phenomenon. Throughout the history of art, there have been copies made and imitations conceived. No one did this better than Han von Megren, one of the most ingenious forgers in history. He painted in the manners of Vermeer, Franz Hall, and other Dutch masters. Han von Megren was so good that he duped art experts, museums, and even Hitler's right-hand man, Hermann Göring, who looted priceless works of art during World War II. Despite the ingenuity of Van Megren's fakes, mistakes were made. In this episode of How to Spot a Fake, Sotheby's Director of Scientific Research, James Martin, and art historian Jonathan Lopez take us on a captivating journey of crimes and intrigues, deceit and trickery, bringing to light how Han von Megren fooled art experts around the world. I think art forgery probably soon followed the first creations of works of art, when somebody wanted that thing but couldn't have it. We know the Romans were forging Greeks, and this has continued to present day. James Martin has been a renowned art analyst for more than three decades, working with international museums, galleries, and the FBI. The kind of forgeries that we deal with, this could be a copy that is misappropriated with a signature to attribute it to a particular artist. It could be a pastiche, or it could be an outright fake, an outright forgery. The forger intends to create something in the style of the artist to sort of fill a void in the artist's body of works. Here in the lab at Sotheby's, Martin is able to conduct trace analysis using forensic science and cutting edge technology. This is called a scanning electron microscope. This microscope is capable of magnifying from 30 times to 60,000 times. But back in the beginning of the 20th century, with no lab close to this, von Megren was able to get away with his scheme. His most successful forgeries, von Megren was working, as the Dutch say, in de trente von, in the, in the style of the old masters, which is a forgery at its most complex. Born in 1889 in Deventer, a small city in the Netherlands, Han von Megren studied architecture but wanted to be an artist. Van Megren had a somewhat successful career under his own name as a uh, portraitist and uh, illustrator. He was not wildly successful, but he was not unsuccessful. Jonathan Lopez is an art historian and recounts von Megren's story in his book, The Man Who Made Vermeers. He started forging sometime in the 1920s, basically because he liked the money. And he also really liked fooling people. He's used devices that forgers throughout history have used and still use today. He would purchase old supports, old canvas paintings on stretchers, remove the old paint, and apply paint that he himself had made. But in order to make the perfect forgery, Van Megren needed to go beyond the expected. Van Megren would avoid pigments that he knew were only recently developed and used. He had a little more latitude when he chose his paint binder. Instead of simply using oil paint, which would be difficult to use and age, so it became 500 years hard, he incorporated a small amount of plastic into the paint, which, when the work was heated, would harden the paint very quickly. Van Megren used a paint based on Bakelite. It's a compound made with carbolic acid and formaldehyde. That's something we would look for today. We would look for the presence of that plastic. We would not be too impressed in an old master work today if we found that all the pigments and all the binders were correct. Because forgers know to do that. We would be looking at the trace elements that were not intended to be there, but became part of the painting inadvertently. In 1936, von Megren produced what was considered a masterpiece, Supper at Emmaus. Presented as a genuine Vermeer, the Boymans Museum in Rotterdam acquired it for a huge sum of money. It became sort of the signature image of the Boymans Museum. It was praised in the newspapers, poetry was written in its honor. It was a big hit at the time. He was thrilled, he now had pretty much carte blanche to do any kind of 
Vermeer forgery he wanted in this new style that he had invented. And this resulted in a number of works that at one point in time were sold to various Nazis, including Goering. In fact, Christ and the Adulteress, the painting sold to Goering, fetched a record price of two million guilders. Vermeer made so much money during the war. He had money all over the place in piles, literally piles of cash that, that he didn't know what to do with. But the good times were short-lived. After the war, the Allies discovered Goring's vast art collection, including an unknown Vermeer. Its acquisition soon traced back to von Megren, who in turn was accused of collaborating with the Germans. And in a spectacular turn of events, von Megren broke down and confessed that he himself had painted Goering's Vermeer. And so the great masterpiece was a phony. And while he was at it, von Megren also admitted to painting several other pictures, including Vermeer's famed Supper at Emmaus. And I think at the time, nobody believed him. And the court at that point said, if you fake them, create a new fake for us which he did under the supervision of police. So Van Megren was put on trial in, in Amsterdam. It was very amusing to have all of these experts deposed as witnesses looking rather foolish for having accepted these pictures as the work of Vermeer. It was a show. And when the story got out, it made headlines around the world, and the forger became sort of instant folk hero. He was, he was the man who had swindled Goering. Von Megren was charged with fraud and sentenced to one year in prison. But before he got there, he had a heart attack and died on November 26, 1947. He's certainly one of the most devious art forgers in history. If Han von Megren were, were working today, he would come up with some scheme that would, yes, fool experts today. Don't underestimate how resourceful a person like that would be. The von Megrens of the world are the reason why a lab like this is here today. This is the first lab of its kind in the world in an auction house. It's comparable to the labs in major museums around the world. It's not only incredibly important for us at Sotheby's to have this capability to answer the questions that are posed to us reliably and conclusively, it also differentiates us in the field from other auction houses. Our role here in scientific research is to examine the physical substance of the work to see if it's consistent with the attribution and consistent with the provenance so that forgers are always kept at bay as James Martin and his team continue to spot fakes and ensure the integrity of art. <laughs>